G'day everyone and welcome back to Our Paranormal World. Today we are going to look at the surprisingly little known case of the Sorky Poltergeist. In November 1960, 11 year old Virginia Campbell moved to Sorky in Clackmannanshire, Scotland with her mother, leaving behind her family and friends in Donegal Island. Virginia's mother and father, Anne and James Campbell, had two older children who were adults by the time Virginia was born, so she was effectively an only child. Her mother, Anne, had taken a job locally, which provided accommodation for her. So Virginia stayed with Anne's brother and his wife and their two children. Virginia shared a bed with nine-year-old Margaret. As an 11-year-old girl, Virginia was unhappy about the move, but accepting nonetheless. The phenomena in this case began only a couple of weeks after Virginia and her mother's arrival in the home, when unaccountable scratching noises in various parts of the home began to occur. The activity soon increased and shortly objects began to disappear and reappear throughout the home. In the living room, furniture would move on its own and doors would open and close with no one nearby, terrifying the family. In one report, a large and heavy linen chest was seen to rise off the floor several inches and its lid was observed to open and then slam down violently. Of course, as you would expect, the family members sought the opinions and advice of their GP and a local reverend, who would later be interviewed by Psy researcher ARG Owen, and audio recordings of the noises in the home would be aired on BBC Radio. While interest in the case increased, the residents noted that these events occurred when Virginia was in the house, but never when she was not. In fact, the phenomena appeared to follow Virginia to school, and on one occasion, her teacher observed Virginia struggling to close her desk lid. She stated the children were supposed to be completing a writing task, but she observed Virginia with both elbows on the desk, trying to force the lid of her desk shut. When she approached Virginia's desk and asked her what she was doing, Virginia replied, nothing miss, honest. Her teacher replied that she should stop that at once. Virginia was then observed to remove her elbows from the desk and, to her teacher's open-mouthed disbelief, the lid began flapping up and down, causing screams of fear in her classmates. Even years after the occurrences, Virginia's teacher, Mrs Margaret Davidson, who was then Miss Stewart, still recalls these events and an incident where she sat at her large oak desk with Virginia standing on the other side, hands behind her back. A blackboard pointer cane on the desk in front of her began to vibrate, and then the desk itself began to lift off the floor and also vibrate. She tried to push the desk back down to the floor, but was unable to, and it remained hovering a few inches from the floor. Mrs Davidson recalls being horrified However, the activity did not end there. She stated the desk turned 90 degrees. So where previously she had been sitting at the long edge of the desk, now the short edge was in front of her. She said she looked at Virginia and saw she was very distressed and remembers her saying, please miss, I'm not doing that. Honest, I'm not. Mrs Davidson also recalled that school books would rise up into the air and move away from Virginia, never towards her. And on one occasion, Mrs Davidson observed an unoccupied desk behind Virginia rise up off the floor and then settle back down. Despite the disruption to the class, her teacher recalls Virginia's classmates being supportive of the young girl. In one instance, with increasing media interest in the case and flocks of reporters gathered around outside the school, a classmate of Virginia's, who looked somewhat like her, put on Virginia's coat and rushed from the school building in the opposite direction to the route Virginia had to take. Of course, 
The press rushed after the decoy, enabling Virginia to get past the throng. Mrs Davidson too was hounded by the press, as well as various other interested persons, one of whom asked her for permission to touch Virginia because she was one of God's chosen. Mrs Davidson even received a letter from a witch doctor in Africa who advised pounding down some bones and dancing over them in an effort to rid Virginia of her ghosts. The Church of Scotland made several visits to the area and held services in an attempt to rid the house of spirits. A service was even held in the classroom, which Mrs Davidson reported as having no impact on the activity. During this time, the noises, knocking and scratching continued whenever Virginia was present in the family home. One witness reported being in Virginia's room with a number of other observers and sawing noises could be heard, as well as the repeated bouncing of a ping pong ball without any ability to pinpoint the source of the noise or even the direction of where it originated. Several disturbances centering around Virginia's bed sheets were reported at various times, including the manifestation of the imprint of a face on her pillow. Virginia's mother reported being roughly pushed off Virginia's bed and the sheets above her daughter repeatedly rising and falling while Virginia herself whimpered. Local spiritualists believed Virginia to be in possession of unusual psychic abilities and publicly commented that her abilities should be guided to become helpful rather than frightening. However, the local GP disagreed, stating that Virginia was not responsible for what happened and referred to an outside agent. He attested that on one occasion Virginia was administered a mild tranquilizer, which he believed would have caused the phenomena to cease had it been conjured by her own imagination. But the phenomena didn't stop. Virginia and her family moved away from the Sorky house and her current whereabouts are unknown. In fact, Author Malcolm Robinson, who has written several books on paranormal occurrences in the UK, researched the case and has not been able to locate her. Interestingly, during his research, Malcolm Robinson found several other reports of strange occurrences in the area in the years since. A resident who moved into the house in 2001 with her husband and two young boys reported a kettle which would keep switching on and off, strange smells that would come and go, and an apparition of a lady sitting on one of the children's beds. Interestingly, they also reported that their son had claimed his bed sheets had changed colour. Malcolm Robinson was surprised to hear this, as he says an entry from the diary Virginia Campbell's family kept records the same thing happening to her 40 years earlier. A resident in a neighbouring house in the 1970s said that they too experienced strange phenomena, with plugs popping out of sockets and scratching noises in the living room. Malcolm Robinson was surprised to find these similar reports of strange activity in the area of these events through 1960 and 61, and says he believes the events surrounding Virginia Campbell were related to a haunting, rather than any emotional disturbances in Virginia herself manifesting uncontrolled psychic phenomena, as others would theorise. Whatever conclusion individuals make on the nature of the strange occurrences, the Socky poltergeist remains one of the most plausible poltergeist cases, with credible, impartial witnesses, including physicians and teachers, and reports from multiple observers of the strange phenomena. And that was our look at the Sorky Poltergeist. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more paranormal content. I'll see you next time.